All right, let me see if I've got audio going to YouTube. It looks like I do. Good evening. Hi, I'm uh, Gary, uh, ham radio call sign, Whiskey 4 Echo Echo Yankee. And uh, I'm here with my friend uh, Dave Ivey, KE4EA. And this is an amateur radio class um, being taught uh, with a Zoom classroom and also uh, being aired live to YouTube. So we're very happy uh, to have you all here. This is the general class. So this is a class for people who already have their technician uh, amateur radio license uh, to upgrade to the next level. So uh, being that this is an introductory class uh, tonight, uh, we're going to meet here, though, for the next 10 weeks on uh, Tuesday nights. Uh, there won't be any test questions covered tonight. Uh, this is more getting to know one another and uh, getting uh, familiar with the, the Zoom system and uh, the classroom environment. Uh, but I think that if you keep coming back, you will uh, find that you enjoy this uh, time. And we've had students tell us that they were happy that the class, they were unhappy that the class was over uh, when we got all done. But uh, we're happy to have you all here. We've got 22 students in our Zoom classroom. And when I turned around before and looked, we had about 10 uh, people in the, uh, the YouTube uh, live stream. So I appreciate that. Um, there's only two of us here in the studio tonight, uh, Dave and myself. Normally we'd have a third person who could uh, mo monitor the chat, but we have some distant friends who are going to be monitoring chat for us, uh, so I'm not sure who all is going to be in there. Uh, but if you have a question or whatnot, feel free to leave it in the YouTube chat and uh, um, maybe someone can get you an answer or we can get an answer to you a, a little bit later. So uh, let's um, go ahead and get started. Dave, if you would uh, give me the uh, laptop video, please. Uh, and uh, this is chapter one, the introduction. Oh, Dave, come on back. When I say chapter one, I mean from this book. This is the book that we're using. It's the ninth edition of the General Class License Manual from the American Radio Relay League. And so we go chapter by chapter each week, uh, with the exception of chapter four, which we split over two weeks because there's so much material in that. And you'll find out that I gave Dave that chapter. So <laughs> he can teach it because it's the hard stuff. So anyway, little humor there. Okay. All right. Now back to the, I, the, uh, the PowerPoint, please. And um, for those of you who are on YouTube and would like to follow along with the class, this is my email address. And if you would just send me an email, w4eey at arrl dot net, uh, and say, hey, I would like to be added to your YouTube mailing list for the duration of the live class, which will go uh, through November of uh, 2022, uh, we'll put you on that list and you'll get all of the links and all of the information that we send to the folks in the classroom. So uh, we'll give you this email address a little later on uh, as well. So um, I want to tell you just a little bit about myself and then uh, we'll turn it over to Dave who can tell uh, his story. And then this is the, the most fun for me as I get a chance to meet all of you um, who are uh, uh, here with us in the classroom. So Dave, if you come back to me, please, on the camera one. Very good. And um, I was first licensed as an amateur radio operator back in <clears throat> 1969 um, when I was uh, 16 years old in high school. And um, before that, I was actually a shortwave listener. I used to love to listen to Radio Moscow and Radio Peking and Voice of America and uh, all these big international broadcasters. I thought that was kind of cool. And uh, so learning more about radio and being in an electronics explorer post uh, that dealt with electronics, I got my ham radio license and, and operated for two years, uh, Morris code, uh, maximum input power of 75 watts. and really just talked around the United States, but had a lot of fun, but it was high school. And uh, a lot of other things uh, got in the way, and so I let the license go. But I was always inter interested in electronics, ended up getting a Bachelor of Science degree from Central Michigan University in Broadcasting, uh, also had my FCC uh, first class radio telephone license, uh, and ended up working in uh, public and commercial broadcasting, both radio and TV, until finally in 1988, uh, I took my hobby to the, the ultimate level and I joined the Voice of America, 
one of those international broadcasters that I mentioned earlier. And I ended up working for, for the VOA for 20 years. I'd gotten my ham radio license back in 1985 again, uh, and I've been continually licensed uh, since about 1985. I uh, had a bunch of different call signs here in the United States. I've had call signs overseas when I've been stationed overseas with the Voice of America. Uh, I retired from there in 2008 and uh, retired in Greenville, South Carolina. And a lot of life happened uh, from since 2008 uh, with uh, a marriage and a divorce and a move and another move. But uh, now I've finally settled down. I'm uh, remarried. I'm living in Anderson County, South Carolina. And uh, I'm going to be building a new station because I'm actually not on the air at the moment. My station is all in boxes. So uh, you can follow along here on the YouTube channel uh, to watch me build the new station and uh, look at the various aspects that go into that. So that's where I am at the moment. You'll learn a lot more about me uh, as uh, we go on. But uh, Dave, why don't you go ahead and take camera two and tell us about yourself. Uh, turn your audio you on. Yep, I think we got it. So. Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Yeah. yeah. Can I you? Sure. sure. One second. There is somebody by name iPad. Yes. yes. Uh, Someone is uh, coming up. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm going to mute them. Yes, yes I'm going to mute them. Thank, Thank you for that. that. And, and it, that's, that's one thing, thing that if you, you can, can on the Zoom, um, identify, identify yourself with your name rather than the default that sometimes comes up for the device with iPad or um, Samsung, Samsung or LG or whatever, or whatever else. else. So, uh, so, so that we know you by name and if you can put your call sign, sign in, in, that would be helpful too. Okay, Dave, over to you. Okay, I'm back. So just a quick introduction. Uh, like Gary, I was licensed uh, back in the late 60s as a teenager. A lot has happened since then. I don't look like a teenager anymore. And I uh, started out with my novice license, which is a five word per minute code speed, or it was back then. Then I rotated um, advanced to general and, and then advanced. Uh, I was working in the two way radio industry at the time, installing and servicing uh, police fire uh, equipment as a, as a side job, working at, at night while I was in high school, believe it or not. So that's kind of what, what got me started. And then, so I've been in electronics pretty much my whole life. Then, much like Gary, life, life happened, and uh, I, I, I think I renewed once and then wound up being expired for about, about 20 years. Um, I was working, I went to work for Motorola and worked for them for 30 years and really had three fascinating careers while I was there. Probably the one of, of greatest interest, uh, I was involved in putting the first 25 or 30 cellular systems in all, of, all around the U.S. when that uh, started up. So that, that, was, that was extremely interesting, in doing all of the uh, field implementation and infrastructure. Been in Greenville now for about 17 years um, and really love it here. We came down from northern, uh, Minnesota, or northern Illinois, Wisconsin. And we just loved leaving the snow in our rear view mirror. So it's, uh, we've really enjoyed South Carolina. Finally, in February of 2016, uh, I got interested in getting back into ham radio. Uh, I actually got a, a shortwave receiver for Christmas before then and started listening around. And uh, we went and uh, tested then in 2016. And because I had formerly been an advanced, I was able to test right up to extra, which is awesome. And at the same time, my wife uh, tested uh, to technician, so we're, we're both involved in the hobby. So that, that's a, a fun thing to do. Um, then in December of 2016, I got this weird email from, from Gary and said, Hey, I'd like to talk to you about something. <laughs> and he was interested in doing an extra class license in January, which was 2017. Neither of us had ever taught the extra before, so we just jumped in the deep end of the pool and, and went for it, and uh, it, it went okay, it went all right, so that was, that was awesome. In terms of current operating, um, the first year or so that I was active as a ham, since I got relicensed, was mostly in digital, a lot of FTA, and uh, I've got my worked all states and uh, DXCC during that time, and then more recently I've been doing summits on the air, parks on the air, and uh, some CW contesting, which I enjoy very, very much. And in terms of personal motivation, the thing that really turns me on 
is helping people do things that they didn't think that they would be able to do. That, that really gets me excited. And for a lot of people, that, that's their ham radio license, uh, especially Chapter 4, as Gary had mentioned. So I'm, I'm very excited to be able to help all of you uh, in, in your quest toward your general class license. Let's switch back to you, Gary. All right, Dave, thank, thank you so, so much. much. And, and uh, uh, now, now we, we come, come to the favorite part, for me anyway, uh, of this first introductory session as I get to learn a little bit about you. Some of you are familiar to me, some of the, the faces, um, but uh, some are not. Uh, so I have a participants list over here on the side of my screen, and it's uh, in alphabetical order by, I guess, first name or the name on the uh, device. So that's the order I'm going to call on you. And if you would, just tell us a little bit about yourself, your name, where you're located, your call sign, um, and uh, what it is uh, about this class, what we'd like to learn in it. Uh, maybe we can uh, focus uh, on that particular area, like is it DXing or contesting or um, advanced uh, digital uh, techniques, things like that. Um, not that we're experts, but um, we know enough to be dangerous. So let me start it out with uh, Brian, uh, K-O-4-U-F-Q. Uh, go ahead and unmute, if you would, Brian, and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hello. I I a lot of echo, but moved down to Georgia about seven years ago. I was the first people of my life, and uh, through just other friends that are into prepping, if you will, you know, got interested. My technician last year in October, and now I just want to take it to the next step. And there's so much to learn, and you know, so many different areas. I'm an expert in. Very good, Brian. Well, that's how I got started in teaching ham radio, was uh, to a group of preppers in uh, Greenville County, South Carolina. So uh, I like that uh, very much. All right, um, let's see. Uh, so hey, no Gary. Yes, go ahead. So this is Lisa. We're getting a horrible echo here when we talk and your mic is open. So basically our voice is coming through your speakers and retransmitting through your mic. Okay. Let me, okay. Let's do. Let's do a little test here. Um, go put it back on. Z let's see here. We're gonna put it back on Zoom. Um, and I'm gonna turn me off. We can hear you now. And, and you could just you could just mute yourself in Zoom as opposed to actually turning off the mic. Um, put that back on there. Um, all right, and let's go back to me. <laughs> we're, we're learning. This is a new system. We built this system before at my old residence, and then I had to rebuild it for here. So <laughs> it's uh, it's all different. Okay, so we've heard from Brian. Thank you, Lisa, for that uh, uh, in bit of information. Uh, let's uh, go over to Dan. I don't have a first a last name or a call sign, but Dan, go ahead and please unmute and tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, my name's Dan Letweiler. I'm from Muscatine, Iowa, and uh, I'm KE0MLG. I've been in ham since, I think, 89. I've been a member of our ARRL for 25 years, 26 years, and uh, I got a, had a, ended up in a divorce and sort of got out of it for quite a while, and and now I I watched you guys on YouTube a couple of times, and then when you come up with this, I figured this is my way of getting my general. So here I am. Super, Dan. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Um, let's uh, move on to Daryl, a familiar face for me. Come on in, Daryl. Unmute. Little pesky little button at the bottom that says unmute. There you go. Yeah. Daryl Lee uh, calls on. Kilo Victor Ford Tango Delta Lima. Um, yeah, I got my technician license in 2018 after uh, going through Gary's technician class. And um, I got into uh, ham radio. A friend of mine suggested it to me, but I really was interested in emergency type stuff. So I participate every week in the uh, uh, SC Heart Net that they have on Thursdays here in South Carolina. I'm a native of Greenville and a member of the uh, Greer, radio, Greer Amateur Radio Club. Very good. Uh, great to see you uh, tonight, Daryl. All right, uh, let's uh, go to Diego. 
uh, Whiskey 2 Delta Romeo Romeo. Now I don't need to say my call sign because you just said it for me. <laughs> so I'm, I'm Diego. I'm in New Jersey. Uh, I've been a technician for a little bit over a year now. Been actually interested in it for quite some time. Uh, back in the 1960s, my father was overseas at a funeral while my mother was giving birth to my younger brother and he communicated with her by somebody patching in a radio through the telephone lines in, uh, ironically, uh, I think it was Dave was his name, from uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin. So I, I actually grew up in northern Illinois on, on the border near Wisconsin as well. So it was always something I was interested in, never really got around to doing it. Uh, was in law enforcement for a number of years, so used radios without a license because you didn't need it because it was the radios that we were using. And uh, when COVID hit, I had a little spare time on my hand. I said, you know what, I think I'm going to pursue this finally. And so earned my technicians and I'm looking forward to earning my general as well. Excellent. Great to have you aboard. Uh, now over to Don, uh, KI5THG. Uh, if you'd hit that unmute button. And uh, tell us a little about yourself, please. And while we're waiting for Don uh, to find his button, um, is the audio improved now with me muting every time? Just nod your head. Okay, good. Glad to hear that. Okay. Well, let's come back to Don. Okay, coming back to Don. Uh, is it Giri or Jiri Santi? Uh, come on is, in. Is, is Giri? Giri, okay, good. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, the same story goes on. Actually, back in 2003, they was let the license expire and came back again. I, I watch your YouTube videos. I'm here to listen to you and learn. I want to contribute back to the community. In fact, I'm starting to teach tech license for about 60 kids between 12 and 18 very soon. I live in New Jersey. Thank you. Wonderful. Glad to have you aboard. Uh, excellent. And Geary is a lot like Geary, so I can I can remember that. So that, that works for me. <laughs> All right. Um, let's, um, Don, uh, KI5THG, uh, are you still with us? Uh, can you unmute? Maybe he's away from the computer. All right. HUD. HUD Parker, W5ZBR. Come on in. Well, you're unmuted, but I'm not hearing you. HUD, I think we have an audio problem. Why don't you go ahead and um, work on that as you can. And uh, all right, now we have somebody identified as iPad. <laughs> Are you on an iPad? Um, Yep, you unmuted. Okay, who is it? Yeah, I'm on it. There okay. may be more than one of us on an iPad. Apparently. Oh, but go, go ahead. Should I go ahead, Gary? Yes, go, go ahead, please. Um, my name is Russell, and my call sign is KC3ECM. I'm located in Washington, uh, D.C. I got my um, technician's uh, license in 2000 and have um, uh, not had time to be able to put a program like this. And so now my work schedule is less, and I'm looking forward to uh, being in the class and trying to get my general license. Okay, Russell, very good. Um, one thing I will say, uh, we had our technical issues tonight. Um, you probably need to move a little closer to your Wi-Fi router if you can. Uh, we were seeing uh, that you had kind of a weak signal uh, indicated on Zoom, um, and this is the, the issue sometimes with Wi-Fi. Uh, as long as you can hear us and see the material, that's, uh, that's good, but we want you to be able to ask questions uh, too. So uh, that's something maybe to think about and consider for next week. Sure. Uh, I'll try that next time. Very good. All right. Joanne, I believe you're up next. Please come on in and tell us about yourself. Hi, I'm Joanne. I'm uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, 
two weeks ago, I got my tech license, so I'm a real rookie. Uh, you have your work cut out <laughs> for you with me. I'm um, not electronically inclined, but um, I had retired from school teaching, and then last year I retired from uh, teaching dyslexic students how to read. And a year has gone by, and I thought, I just have to learn something. Uh, this retirement was starting to get on my nerves. So I thought, I've always been interested in uh, ham radio, and I thought, what better thing to learn when I know nothing really about it at all, electricity, nothing. So here I am, and um, I signed up for this two weeks later after uh, I got my tech license because I thought the vocabulary's in my head. Let's keep it going, and uh, we'll see what happens. Great, Joanne. Well, I like the way you're thinking, and it's uh, like learning a new language, uh, yes. practice and, and, and repetition, and um, for a long time you may not get it, and then all of a sudden, boom, it'll come to you and go, <laughs> oh, that's what they were talking about. So <laughs> hang in there. You you can do this. Uh, Casey, I think you're up next. Please come on in. Hi, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, um, you're kind of low, but come on in. Can you hear me? Uh, for, he's uh, very Can low in volume for me, uh, Casey. Oh, how about now? Um, a little better. Wow, that's a lot of equipment you've got there behind you. <laughs> Can you hear me now? We'll, we'll listen hard. Sorry. Must be bad uh, Bad signal. Hi, my name is Casey, KD2YMM. Um, I've had my license, um, like a couple other people, mix a couple other people what they've mentioned. I studied at home on my own during covid um, right, um, I'm located in upstate New York. Uh, right now I operate 100% CW, never plugged in a microphone, never had a voice, never digital. Um, I'm a member of the Long Island CW Club and, and you had posted a message uh, not too long ago about your general class. Um, and I've seen some of your YouTube videos and actually was following along with your previous general class when this one popped up. So really just looking to you know expand my privileges and increase my knowledge in, in ham radio having a blast and uh, looking forward to the class and, and meeting everyone wonderful Casey copied all of that and um, well see there's your problem you're not used to using a microphone <laughs> yes <laughs> see I'm the opposite um, I'm, I'm a phone guy so I, I talk all the time but yeah um, Dave Ivey over here, he started to pick up his uh, CW skills uh, and he joined the Long Island CW Club and then they kind of roped me into it so I haven't taken any of the classes there yet but I used to do CW but I haven't in a long time so maybe this is a good time for me to, to do that. So uh, I appreciate that Casey. Um, Lisa, you're up next. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey everyone. I originally got my license in Virginia, and uh, it's a classic case of uh, sibling rivalry. I had kind of thought of doing uh, ham, you know, for a while. It was just sort of in the back of my mind as kind of a hobby that I might pursue, especially to help out with emergency communications in a volunteer capacity. And then my brother sort of dropped the bomb that, oh, he'd taken and passed his test. So I was like, hold on a second. COVID hit, which gave me the opportunity to study just like you all. So I took the um, the technician exam and passed obviously and so now i'm going for general my brother does not have his yet so look at that and i live in texas currently wonderful very good all right so i see there was a chat message from lloyd that says he's not quite ready to go um, so we're going to jump and go down to lynn kn4 mmr Lynn, are you there? Can you find your unmute button, which is in the lower left-hand corner of most Zoom software? Sorry about that. There you go. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Lynn, and I just got my tech license oh, a couple of years ago. And uh, I got interested in RF back in middle school when I... Uh, really pushed my father to get me a shortwave receiver for Radio Shack. It was the, uh, 
It was the DX160, and I love listening to that thing. Uh, the general, you know, show radio broadcast. You mentioned you worked for Voice of America. Used to love to listen to uh, VOA and all the other stations I could pick up around the world. But just prior to that, I, I really got interested when I built a small shortwave uh, receiver, crystal receiver. And of course, I was listening to the propaganda of uh, Cuba. <laughs> They have a very strong station that they push into the uh, to the Americas since they're offshore 90 miles. But I was in Tennessee at that time. I thought it was really miraculous that I could pick up that station so clearly and I had no power other than the crystal uh, receiver uh, that I'd put together. And so many, many years later, I finally uh, had the extra time and began to study and I got my tech a couple of years ago. Unfortunately, I haven't had any QSOs I built a 10 meter antenna where I really want to get uh, into things is in the HF realm. And there was only one little small opportunity for me to uh, use a radio and try to get into it. And that was at the time in the uh, 10 meter, I built a 10 meter dipole uh, probably about a year ago. And at that time, the sunspot activity is very low. And obviously we just entered a new cycle. So I'm looking forward to getting ready for this. And I thought this would be great to get going, I was interested in DX, and there is an expedition that's going to Duvet, Duvet Island hmm. next January. You guys might want to look that up. It's really neat. They're going to have uh, 12 operators, and their goal is to get 200,000 contacts. There's a gentleman who's leading that expedition, and he has a really nice uh, YouTube video explaining all of it as he's talking to a radio club in Australia. So. I feel very happy that I was able to catch your beginning class this fall, and I'm looking forward to it. Thanks a lot. Very good. Well, thank you. And um, Mark Adler, uh, you're up next. Lloyd will be coming back to you here in a little bit. Mark, go ahead. Mark Adler? Yes, I just unmuted good. myself. Hi, everyone. My name is Mark Edler. That's KD9TBZ. KD9TBZ. Remember the Zulu? By the way, I got this from Ham Crazy. Ham Crazy. All kinds of great stuff. See, like this. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I, as a kid, remember in Poland, remember listening to Radio Free Europe and Radio America. And the communists were constantly... Uh, sending waves to interrupt so they were jumping frequencies and everybody was trying to figure out where's the next jump so that that's how these things work as a kid i was interested in electronics and, uh, unfortunately i uh, needed something to pay the rent so i spent my life working in audit it and accounting and i retired in 2020 and first year i studied art, history of art and I saw these uh, prep shows with uh, ham radio, and I said, hmm. So I, I thought two things. One, I wanted uh, electronics, but second, I wanted something that will challenge my brain to study something I don't know anything about. And so you need to keep just like a body. You need to keep your brain fresh. So <laughs> I, I got into this thing, and I saw... Uh, the whiskey guy uh, on YouTube videos, and I, uh, I was uh, that was God sent uh, as far as as far as the lectures and, and things. The other thing I'm also interested in, and I got myself the uh, M M J uh, M F J five five seven. I want to study the the C W, and so that's my other thing on a bucket list because that. T combines learning like an instrument because of the sounds and like a language. So that builds new synapses. So this course not only builds electronics and way of communicating, but also uh, challenges your brain and it, it builds up your brain and synapses. So it's like like a health club for the brain. But, oh, uh, just one more thing. This guy that, that you told to uh, move closer to router, the, what I had did is I put an extender and if you put an plug an extender, you you don't have to move, so you can you can do the extender. And that's about it. Unless you want to talk about my Toastmasters experience. 
<laughs> well, we'll do that some other time, Mark. That's quite all right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And thank you for, yeah, this is a, a great experience. It's a great hobby. There's wonderful people uh, in amateur radio. and um, But it does, it helps you to develop your mind and in various different aspects. There's always something interesting. All right, you got to explain this to me. The name on the screen is Mark B., but you don't look like a Mark B. We have a young You're lady. You're talking to me? No, there, there's, a, there's a young lady um, in a, a kind of a peach colored uh, top. There you go. Who are you? I'm Wendy B. Ah, oh, Wendy, I, I, I recognize you now. I didn't recognize you before. Oh, the hair is different. I yes. Think. Yeah, okay. Well, Wendy, yeah. uh, tell us a little bit more. Okay, about yourself. Yeah, I took the Morse code class that you were involved with a while back. Um, I am Wendy KN4HTP, and I've been in ham radio for about four years. I have been calling a net three times, two or three times a month for the past four years. And I decided I'm ready to start talking to other states. So I'm going, and I have the radio that has the capability. So I'm going to get the credentials so I can, so people can hear me in other places. Perfect. Wonderful. I apologize. I didn't recognize you, but yes, well, this is the thing with COVID. You, you, you see, don't see people for years and then all of a sudden, oops, there they are. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. Great to see you. All right. Moving on. Maureen, you're up next. Uh, if you would please unmute and just tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, Maureen, you unmuted, but I don't hear you. Oh, now you muted back. Okay. Okay, you've unmuted. Say something, please. Oh, I think, Maureen, you've got a problem with your microphone. So, because um, we can't hear you. I can't hear her. Can anybody else hear her? No. Okay, no one else can either, so. All right. Yeah, no problem. No problem. We'll hear your story at some future time. Appreciate it. You can go ahead and mute yourself back if you want. And um, then um, um, we'll, uh, we'll hear about you uh, at some future date. Paul, uh, KQ4BOU from North Carolina. You're up next. Uh, well, hello, everybody. Glad to be here. Uh, I'm a <clears throat> recently retired aircraft mechanic for 48 years. And back in the 60s, like yourself, I got interested in um, shortwave radio and built a bunch of Heath kits, uh, built a GR64 that was a shortwave receiver and really got into that. And um, I'm a member of the Long Island Code Club. I just started that and I just got my tech license like a couple months ago. Um, so I'm trying to learn code, which is a real challenge. And uh, I want to upgrade, of course. And I'm, I'm, you know, anxious to get on the air. And uh, so glad to be here. Thank you. Well, thank you, Paul. Glad to have you with us. And another Paul now, uh, Paul G., uh, if you'd go ahead and unmute and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hello, everybody. My name is Paul Gans, uh, KD9 Sierra Yankee Delta, I'm living in in Palm Coast, Florida. I've been a tech since last, a year ago, June. Um, got into it because it was one of my preps that I was lacking. Wanted to get into uh, communications. Um, over the, since Christmas, I've been dabbing with uh, DMR. And this summer, I've been working with shortwave and with DLT SDRs, uh, realizing that I don't know anything, <laughs> that my next step is to um, go on and get my general where I can learn what's going on. Well, great. Well, hopefully we'll be able to help you on in that uh, okay. journey. And uh, there's a lot to not know about in this hobby as well. Right. So we're all learning. We say that when you get your license, you have a license to learn. It doesn't mean you know everything. You just uh, can learn in a different way. All right, uh, Perry uh, Polino, KE5ABF, please come on in. Good evening, um, Gary. Uh, first, I need to thank you for helping me get my tech license, which I did in 2018. Um, 
through watching your videos. Uh, I am from South Texas, the Corpus Christi area. Um, I was one of those people that, um, and don't anybody beat me up over this, uh, used a CB radio back in the 70s. And the little shop that I bought all my stuff from, uh, that guy was actually an amateur radio person. And uh, he tried to talk me into amateur radio, and I just wasn't interested in the CW um, learning part, which was a requirement back then. Uh, then after moving here to Texas in 2008, uh, uh, about 2017, I ran into a gentleman at the gas station. Um, I still had a CB radio on my truck, and uh, he asked me if I was a ham operator. I said, nah. He says, you ought to, you ought to join our club here. And I says, well, I, I told him the story about not wanting to learn CW. He says, you don't need that anymore. Well, I went home that night and <laughs> uh, sure enough, looked it up and decided, well, I'm going to get my amateur radio license then. So again, I made my tech license. I've made a couple of attempts uh, to get my general license uh, and I failed the test both times. Oh, I'm, I think I did that to you. Uh, Perry, unmute yourself. I think I, uh, I think I accidentally muted you. Um, Perry, that was my fault. I think I muted you. Would you unmute yourself? We didn't hear that last part. And then I talked I, to you. I said, uh, yeah. Good. Go ahead. Yeah, and uh, I do belong to our local club here um, in South Texas and uh, trying to get a little more active in the amateur radio um, community. Um, so hopefully I'll get through my general here and I get a home station. Right now all I have is a rig in the car, so uh, it limits my time on the radio, but I... I did recently pick up a used uh, base station that I'll be getting an antenna for and trying to get on the air here. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Sorry for the fat finger there. Uh, Randy, um, tell us a little bit about yourself, if you would, if you'd unmute. And uh, where are you? There you are. Well, I've been a technician for about a little over a year now uh, with the help of your classes. Uh, only missed the general by four. I took it the same night I took the technician. So I need a little brush up before I try to take that one again. Um, in Big Spring, Texas. Uh, got a nice club here that where I can test. Uh, uh, in the night I took my technician lesson. Uh, there was a guy there taking his that I hadn't seen and over nearly 30 years <laughs> and didn't even know he was there until after it was all over <laughs> uh that's about it just enjoy, uh, enjoy your classes well thank you randy and uh, very happy to have you uh, with us so lloyd has uh, texted us or chad in the chat that uh, he's ready to go so let me jump back to lloyd uh ko4pxb go ahead and unmute Hey, sir. How are y'all? Good. <clears throat> yeah, the, um, I've been a ham radio since 2018. I'm retired military, so the military unit that I'm in now requires the at least one person be a ham radio operator. So that way, and I'm doing this also wanting to better myself by upgrading my license to the general because there's definitely a lot to learn in it and to better understand it and just not by reviewing all the question pools and really only have a book knowledge, not hands on. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Thank you so much. And uh, just FYI, uh, your camera was uh, not on or was black. It, it indicates it's connected uh, here on Zoom, but uh, we're not actually seeing you. But maybe maybe that's on purpose. Maybe you've got the lens cap on. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Um, Rick, KD9NQF, uh, your turn next, please. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hello, Gary. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. Uh, uh, Rick Zerb. And I live in northern Wisconsin. I've been a technician uh, for about three years. And uh, I took a live class that was uh, taught by two instructors and really struggled through it. And uh, almost gave up until I happened to go on YouTube and found Gary's videos. And um, your presentation just made so much more sense than what I was learning in the live class. And uh, 
So uh, that's the main reason why I'm back here now. Um, I would like to expand uh, my knowledge of amateur radio uh, and also expand the opportunities for more bandwidth and, and such. So um, hoping to retire in the next couple of years. And this is one of the hobbies I hope to develop a little bit further. So um, that's that's my story. So. Well, thank you, Rick. Thank you for those uh, kind words. And uh, in a few minutes, I'll tell you about our the first general cl class that I taught uh, here in the area. Okay, we're, we have got three Toms registered in the class. So let's start with Tom C. He's first on the list. If you'd go ahead and unmute and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, everybody. My name is Tom Kalo. I live in coastal Maine. My call sign is Whiskey Oscar Zero. Delta India Echo. Uh, I began in the radio hobby back in the 1980s when uh, my father came home with a shortwave receiver for me. Uh, I used to stay up all weekend long, literally 48 hours straight, just thumbing the dial, mesmerized by that thing. Uh, 1994, I got my tech license. And then uh, as uh, somebody else said in this dialogue, uh, life happened, and I got out of the hobby for probably about 15 years. And then uh, I slowly began to get back into it, and life happened again. And now I'm retired, and I hope to uh, finally upgrade, seeing as how I've been a tech for 28 years. <laughs> so I think it's about time. And I appreciate everybody uh, sharing their stories, and it's nice to have a group of people with a common interest. Um, I do kind of want to apologize to everybody up front. I am going to have to get out of here pretty soon tonight because I have to catch an airplane at three o'clock in the morning. But uh, <laughs> during our next class, I'll be zooming from the Caribbean, so it'll be worth it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. we'll work some DX uh, next week uh, down there. That's great. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate it. All right, Tom number two, KD9VNL. Uh, you're next up on the box. Please come on in. Hi, uh, my name's Tom. Um, I just got my tech license in uh, middle of July, end of July, uh, and I'm in the western suburbs um, in Illinois, just west of Chicago, about 30 miles or so, and uh, probably should have, I, I'm a teacher, had the summers off and looking for something to do, and it's something that I was always interested in, and I probably should have uh, studied for both. I just kind of looked at the question pool, studied the question pool, passed the test, don't really know a whole lot and hoping to learn here more and, and get better at this hobby. Absolutely, you can do it. Um, we have a pretty good success rate uh, in this class, so uh, I think you'll do okay. All right, and uh, last, uh, Tom P., uh, last on the list that I have in front of me, uh, KD9LFM. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, please, Tom P. Hi, everyone. My name's Tom, KD9LFM. I've been a tech for a while now. Um, I started out, like most others, listening to shortwave radio when I was in my teens, back in the late 70s and early 80s when the solar cycle was at a huge peak and the dial was full of things to listen to. Um, I became, that led me to uh, being interested in electronics. I became an electrician. Uh, after a while, I decided uh, I didn't want to keep working out in the Wisconsin winters anymore. <laughs> I am from central Wisconsin. So I uh, turned back to my electronic skills and went into computer uh, developing and then uh, became a systems engineer and I retired two years ago. Um, I'm very active in my local ham club and it is chock full of generals and extras. So I uh, decided that I need to step up and keep up with the rest of the guys in the club. And plus, I got getting a little tired of just doing FT8 on 10 meters. So, very good. Well, glad to have you here. So, I think um, Hud Parker, did we get to you, or were you not available at one point, or did we already talk with you? Okay, you've unmuted. I can see that, but I don't hear anything. How about now? Okay, now I hear you. Alrighty, it helps when you hit the button you're supposed to hit on your headset to <laughs> unmute yourself. Alrighty, uh, a little bit of background on me. Uh, 
my first exposure to ham was in college in the late 80s. Uh, I think it was right around 1989, maybe 1990. But anyway, uh, my college roommate was a novice and he would talk to his mom and dad through repeaters on Tuesdays and Thursdays instead of spending the expensive mo or the money on the expensive uh, long, long distance that we had to pay for at the time. Fast forward uh, probably about 10 years or so, I joined the Army at the ripe old age of 27, and I was an infantryman. I thought, all right, I don't need to know anything about much. Get assigned to a long-range surveillance unit, and uh, we were primarily HF. And being the new guy, I got to be the pack mule, and pack mule also means that you're the radio telephone operator. So I started, uh, that was my exposure to uh, HF. They gave us a uh, very detailed two-day anterior theory, <laughs> antenna theory class, uh, and I really uh, I caught on to it, and it really got my attention. Uh, worked my way up so I couldn't play with my radio anymore, obviously through promotions and stuff. Then I got out of the Army, and uh, that's when I discovered shortwave, and I was listening to uh, mainly BBC, uh, Israel, and the voice of Russia, and I would laugh at that. <laughs> and uh, of course, if you listen to the news, uh, the world news through various different angles, you're going to figure out what's actually going on. And then uh, I guess uh, in 2018, I finally got up off my butt and got my technician license and didn't really connect with anyone in the local clubs. Oh, by the way, my call sign is Whiskey 5 Zulu Bravo Romeo, and I'm in San Antonio. So then uh, set my radios uh, on the shelf and they got very dusty. And then of course it was the Balfang, like most of us get the first one. And we moved and I found my radios and decided, okay, let's try to do something. I joined both of the clubs here in San, or two of the clubs here in San Antonio, San Antonio Radio Club, which I think is the second oldest radio, uh, con continuously operating radio club in the nation. And I also joined uh, Alamo area radio operators and so I'm a member of both of those and uh, started making connections with people and they figured out what where my knowledge is that I really do understand uh, HF and everything else, not just uh, UHF. And then I uh, really connected with a buddy of mine. Uh, he's in the Air Force and uh, go figure, he's in the Air Force here in San Antonio. But anyway, uh, he got me involved in uh, going with him to uh, Parks on the Air and it's just expanded from there. It's like I told you uh, before the class. Uh, this weekend, there were four of us doing a poda yesterday at Blanco State Park in Blanco, Texas. And uh, I was the only tech. I was the only technician, uh, but they were all laughing at me because when we we're putting up uh, antennas, I was analyzing what they were doing. And all right, this is what you're trying to do. No, that's not what I'm trying to do. No, that's what your antenna is telling me that you're trying to do. And uh, so anyway, at lunch, they got on me, but I'd already signed up for this class. I've watched, uh, I was telling my wife, she's sitting over there, but uh, you know, when we were talking, I've watched so many of yours and Dave's videos that it's odd talking to you because it feels like <laughs> I know you because I've seen you so much. But anyway, there's a real quick synopsis. Uh, I'm going to get my general and then I'm going to start studying CW and then immediately go for my extra so that I'm not limited to where I can be. Super HUD. Well, um, we will have an extra class, at least it's uh, planned for January of uh, 2023, very much like this. It'll uh, go for about uh, 17 weeks and uh, would be happy to have you aboard. Okay, uh, last but not least, um, Maureen, did you get any, ch did you make any changes to your microphone, Maureen? Um, do you think it would work now? Okay, you've unmuted, but no, we still can't hear you. <laughs> okay, well, well, we'll get to you uh, in, a, in a future class. Let's uh, continue on here. Um, Dave, if you'd uh, go back to uh, the switcher one there, thank you so much. And uh, back to my laptop for the PowerPoint presentation, because we've already heard from uh, many of you some of the reasons to upgrade. Uh, and um, public safety, uh, helping out in a time of disaster. Uh, this is still hurricane season here in South Carolina. Uh, so that's something that uh, we're, we're always uh, concerned about, um, wanting to make sure that we have uh, communications uh, during difficult times. And one of the mottos is, when all else fails, uh, ham radio gets through. Uh, 
And uh, so uh, it, it's true. Um, and uh, to make a point, um, my first overseas assignment uh, with the Voice of America, you know, when you signed up, you know, they have the, the, the thing that says, oh, we have stations in Montserrat, or we have stations in Costa Rica. We have sta Where did they send me? Liberia, West Africa. That was my first overseas assignment. And it was back in 1989. And uh, it was an interesting time. Uh, it was certainly a culture shock uh, for me to be over there. Um, and I was a, an assistant transmitter plant supervisor at uh, the Monrovia uh, or Liberia relay station, uh, uh, just outside of Monrovia, Liberia. These are actual pictures uh, online of the old antenna field. And uh, this is the transmitter hall and those bubbles there on the right. Uh, that's where I worked. Uh, I was uh, working with the Liberian technicians and some Filipino technicians and uh, other Americans in broadcasting uh, VOA programs uh, from Liberia. And it was all well and good except uh, this guy came along, uh, Charles Taylor. Uh, a rebel leader who decided uh, that the uh, administration of Samuel Doe in Liberia was oppressive to the people. So he and his band of merry rebels came over from the Ivory Coast and marched their way all the way down to Monrovia and eventually took over uh, the country. Um, and it was a, a very difficult time. Um, we had an intermittent telephone service uh, through Liberia Posts and Telecommunications. And so what I was able to do with the station manager of the Greenville, North Carolina uh, VOA station, uh, Jack Moss uh, was his name at the time, Jack and I had a daily schedule, uh, probably on 20 meters. Uh, I can't even remember Jack's call sign now, unfortunately. He's a silent key. He's passed on. Uh, but um, every day we would communicate via ham radio, not business. We weren't conducting business. They just wanted to know that we were still there <laughs> and that everybody was still healthy and everybody was still well. So um, when all else fails, amateur radio can get through. Uh, it, regular communication was impossible without that. And it's the general class license that gives you access to the high frequencies, also known as short wave. Uh, and that's what you want for long distance communication. So reasons to upgrade, well, more frequencies, uh, the high HF bands, uh, more communications modes that you can play with. FT8 is a lot of fun. Uh, technical opportunities. Uh, and, and when you go out with your buddies, you're, they're not going to make fun of you because you've got your general class license. My reason to operate great is to get access to the 20 meter band, 14 megahertz. This is a long distance amateur radio band that is open nearly 24 hours a day from pretty much any location. Now, you can't go to um, all locations uh, 24 hours a day, but the band is open to somewhere um, 24 hours a day. So 20 meters, uh, you get access with your general class license. Now, I say that Dave has a longer list. <laughs> uh, Dave can tell you more about that as we go on, uh, climbing up to the top of uh, mountaintops and operating small portable stations. And then uh, CW, Morse code and Morse code DX. Uh, CW is a very popular band for distant uh, transmissions. So to qualify for a general class license, you must pass elements two, that's the technician license, and elements three, the general class license. Um, if you had a technician license uh, before 1987, you can upgrade to general uh, just by showing proof, and proof that you were licensed. Um, and an expired uh, license, uh, a general class license, may be renewed after passing the technician test. And you've heard tonight a couple of folks uh, who found out about us from the Long Island CW Club. There's their website, so if you're at all interested in learning Morse code, you might want to check out their website and, and learn a little bit about them. Uh, and um, uh, we also have some Morse code videos on my website, uh, on the, uh, the YouTube channel. Uh, Mel Robinson uh, taught uh, beginning and intermediate class, so you can check that out as well. So this is the book we're going to use. It's the ninth edition of the uh, General Class uh, License Manual. Uh, and we're going to try to cover one chapter each week, uh, with the exception of chapter four. That'll be over two weeks. 
Uh, this is chapter one. This is the introduction, so no test questions. But for next week, if you would, please make sure that you read chapter two. Uh, it's important that you uh, kind of work ahead um, because we want you to hear this information from different points of view. Because when you read the book, you may go, ah, uh, what are they talking about? I don't understand. But then when you hear possibly me or Dave talk about it, then you go, oh, that's what that meant. Um, and so getting information from different points of view uh, can be important. So here is our class schedule. And I know this is really small on the screen and you're probably not going to be able to see it. But this gives me the opportunity to tell you that after the class concludes, I'll be sending you an email probably tomorrow with a link to where you can download all of these PowerPoint presentations. Uh, so everything that we talk about you will get as a PDF file that you can go back and review and uh, so you can print out this the page and uh, uh, put it up and so you'll know what the class schedule is going to be. The finish line is your test and it's a test that it's uh, based on a question pool of 453 questions. I double checked that this morning. You don't have to take a test of 453 questions though. You, you'll take a test of 35 of those uh, and you need to get 26 of the 35 correct in order to get your upgrade to general class. Now here in the classroom we'll, we're going to cover all 453 questions. We'll make sure that you're at least exposed to them, uh, have an idea what the right answer is and why it's the right answer. And we're going to tr try to provide you with some right answers uh, study sheets uh, with test questions. So some people like to go this, this way of test question, right answer, test question, right answer, kind of like flashcards. Uh, some people uh, learn that way. Right now, try to think in your mind where and when you're going to take your test. I want you to, to establish that goal now. Now, we're going to end up in November uh, with the class. So toward the mid or end of November would be a great time for you to scope out where you might be able to take your general class test um, and um, how you want to do that. Now, can you test online? Yes, you can. And uh, in the past, we've recommended specific organizations, but now I'm going to say go to this website, hamstudy.org stroke sessions. And there you will find both in-person and online test sessions that you can sign up for. And we'll talk more about the test session as we get toward the end of the class. Um, there can be some idiosyncrasies with online testing. Like, for example, you may not be able to use your own calculator. You may have to use the calculator built into the computer that you're using. But uh, those are little things. Or if you can find a ham radio club in your area that uh, they may be doing the testing. And so that's that's uh, what you want to find out about now and determine you know, where you're going to test and when you're going to test. And with this goal in mind, then you are the key to your success. All of the information that you need is going to be covered in the class and it's all contained in the book. But your motivation in, in getting it out and in getting the, uh, the information that you need uh, is going to be the key uh, to your success. So we say uh, every week, if you would, please bring your book, uh, something to take notes in. You're going to hear from Dave here in a little bit about some learning techniques. Taking notes is a great uh, technique for learning. Um, we use the um, Texas Instruments TI-36X Pro calculator. Uh, Dave will be actually giving you, be giving you keystroke by keystroke uh, instruction on how to use that calculator. It's about 20 bucks. It's not expensive and um, you can put the formula right on the entire screen there. So um, that's the calculator we recommend and most test sessions will have no problem at all with it because it can be erased. There are no uh, persistent memories in it. Um, and um, so we've not had a problem. Some test sessions can be, mm, well, I won't go into it, but <laughs> we've not generally had a problem with this calculator. There is no real heavy math in the general class. There's some formulas, but uh, you can do it. Uh, we want you to be confident about that. Here's another website that I'd like you to know about and sign up if you haven't already for a free account. Uh, the American Radio Relay League, which is the U.S. organization for amateur radio operators, uh, has the arrlexamreview.appspot.com. Kind of rolls off the tongue there, doesn't it? But anyway, here you can practice 
You can take tests based on the chapter that you're studying, or you can take sample 35 question tests. Uh, it's free. You just have to sign up and give them your email address so that um, you log in with that as your username, and that way they can keep track of your progress. Uh, but it's free and uh, something that you, you probably should do. Uh, or you can get apps for your phone uh, that can also help you along. Uh, there are different ways that you can study, whatever works for you. In the past, uh, we have strongly urged you, in fact, given you direct links to other videos by another amateur radio operator, uh, Dave Kessler, KE0OG. He's the OG, the original guy in amateur radio videos. I mean, he's one of the earliest ones, and uh, he's been around for a long time, and he was kind of an inspiration for me uh, to try to do some videos. Um, well, a big change this year for the general class and for the extra class videos, they're now only available to American Radio Relay League members. Uh, so um, the technician videos are still available uh, freely, but uh, for those, so um, we'll provide you with the links to the videos, but you have to be an ARRL member in order to view them. Uh, sorry about that. But maybe it's a, a motivation to, uh, to get a membership because there are benefits. We'll talk about that. So after each class, we'll send you an email with a PDF copy of the presentations. Uh, the classes are streamed live to YouTube and recorded there for later review. So if you miss a class, don't say, oh, I've got to quit. I got to give up because I, I can't catch up. No, you can. Just watch the video on YouTube and you'll be right caught up completely. In fact, that's how we started doing these videos uh, was for our in-person students so they would not drop out. So ask questions, communicate. Um, I've sent all of your email addresses in the open so you can see everybody else's email address. If you uh, hear, heard somebody tonight that sounds simpatico with you uh, and you got a question, you can ask us, you can ask Dave or myself, or you can ask one of your other students to help you along. We are the teaching team. You are the learning team. And uh, if you uh, do it together, uh, you can be successful. Consider joining, joining a local amateur radio club. Here are three that I'm a member of, the Greer Amateur Radio, uh, the Blue Ridge Amateur Radio uh, Society in uh, Greenville, and the Anderson Radio Club. Find one that matches your local interests and also maybe one that's going to give a test. And you can use this uh, link from the ARRL, uh, ARRL.org stroke find a club uh, to find a local affiliated uh, ham radio club in your area. Uh, just put in your zip code or your address and uh, they'll tell you the ones that are nearest to you. So we mentioned earlier a ham ticket is a license to learn. Uh, have fun doing the, the learning. And um, one of the ways you can learn is by subscribing to QST Magazine. You get that free with your ARRL membership. Uh, it's about $49 a year. Uh, that might be a little steep for some, uh, but uh, it's a good value. Um, so... Briefly, if you don't own a high-frequency receiver now, you, you might see if you can borrow one from somebody in your club. Uh, we'd like you to start listening uh, to, to radio. Um, here are some links to some online software-defined radios. And you can use those to listen into the amateur radio bands on your computer uh, and actually start hearing ham radio traffic. Uh, messages being passed back and forth or just communications uh, and it will help bring to life what we're going to talk about uh, what you read in the book and what you hear about in class and uh, if you've got questions from something that you've heard bring it to class and we'll all learn together so welcome to ham radio the best hobby in the world um, my, my uh, um, motto is have fun and learn something new, um, and uh, that's what we're going to try to do here. So for next week, watch for emails uh, from me or from Dave, uh, which will uh, tell you about what's upcoming or, or what uh, has just passed. Um, if you're a member, we'll watch the Dave Kassler videos. Uh, if you haven't read Chapter 1, do it now, and then read Chapter 2 
for next week. And please come to class next week ready to learn. So um, for those of you on uh, YouTube and you'd like to get on the YouTube email mailing list, if you did just send me an email at this email address, w4eey at arrl.net, I'll make sure that you get the same information and the same links uh, that the 26 people in the classroom are, are going to get uh, on their mailing list as well. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a five-minute intermission. There'll be a counter on the screen, and then we're going to come back, and Dave is going to tell you a little bit uh, about some fun ways to learn, some things you might not have thought of, and then we'll be uh, done for the evening. So we will try to get you out of here by 8.30. That's our goal. Uh, so uh, we're going to take a, a five-minute QRX, uh, ham radio shorthand for standing by. Uh, five minutes, and we'll be back. Uh, I'm still here. Yep, go ahead. Yes, I, I didn't realize that it's Eastern time, and of course I'm Central time, so I'm an hour... Well, no problem. You'll be with us uh, on time next week, and that's when the fun starts because that's when the test questions start. So no no test questions tonight, but glad to have, have you with us, Mike, okay? I have another question. What is the difference of the YouTube videos for the AWRL members as opposed to what you present in, in your class? Um, so that's a different ham, uh, Dave Kassler, uh, and he does introductions to the chapters. So he, he provides uh, some supplemental information, but he does not actually teach the class. Okay. All right, here's our five-minute break.
we go. You're on. All right. It sounds like we're live and we're back on. Somebody just wave at me and make sure you can hear me. Okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. All right. You'll notice, first of all, well, um, I'm going to have two sections I'm going to be covering. It'll take uh, about a half an hour, so we might even get you out a little bit early, which would be awesome. We always allow for, for two hours, which would be, we promise to get you out by 8.30. Um, so this first one is some uh, general study tips, and then I'm going to have a, a, a short section on learning how to learn. A lot of people go to school and spend a lot of money and time, and they never have a class on learning how to learn. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. You'll notice that our contact information is normally on the first slide of uh, our presentations. Uh, Gary and I are both happy to take uh, emails, uh, even phone calls, so uh, that's, that's why it's there. So I've got some mystery numbers, since uh, math is going to be one of the things we're going to be talking about here. Uh, I've got these funny numbers up here, and Gary's already mentioned some of them. So the, the first one uh, we can skip past, that's the number of pool questions. The next one is 10. Now there's a couple of things that relate to 10. First of all, there's 10 weeks in our class, then we'll be ready to, to test. There's also 10 chapters in the book. So that's, that's what that mystery number is all about. 35, Gary mentioned, that's the number of questions on your test. And 26 and 9, I don't know if we mentioned these numbers, but th you have to have 26 correct answers to pass your general test, which means you can get 9 wrong. Uh, the results from our class, usually people pass it, uh, there are some people that will have a perfect score, uh, but typically one or two, two misses is pretty average. Who, who would like to get 100%? Just wave. Okay, good, good, good. Well, we're going to have enough information so that that will be possible. And then 90% plus, I don't have any hard data on this, but uh, I'm pretty certain that that is the number of uh, successful passes after taking this class series. If you put in the work, you'll attend the classes or pick up the YouTube if you miss one on Zoom and uh, stay current with us. Uh, you're not going to have any trouble at all passing this uh, exam. So that, that's exciting. There's so many things you can do with a general. So what are our objectives? Well, we want you to have some confidence to pass the, the portions that some people might think are, are difficult, you know, particularly the math. Now, uh, we cover more than just the answers to the questions. So the personal growth and insight that you'll gain from going through this and the context, uh, the way things relate to other things, I think will be a great help to you and is one of our objectives. We'd like you to become a better learner. That's what the rest of this session will be about. And we have some assumptions about you. Um, math might have discouraged you from pursuing this earlier. Is it anybody like that? Oh, nobody's, nobody's scared. That's, that's good. Uh, I get a different answer when we do the extra class, by the way. <laughs> if you look at the extra class book, um, that's not scary, it's terrifying. But we, we help people through that as well. So, can be intimidating. We assume that you are not an electrical engineer, and I was listening careful as we were doing the introductions, and uh, nobody came up being an electrical engineer. So we assume that you're not an electrical engineer, and secondly, we assume that you don't want to be, okay? <laughs> so we don't go deeper than necessary, but we do try to offer enough context so that things will make sense. We assume that you've been exposed to some high school algebra, but it might have been 100 years ago. We don't have to do any algebraic manipulations. There are some formulas that we'll be looking at, uh, but you won't have to solve for anything. Uh, the formulas in the general and even the extra exam are what some people call plug and chug. The numbers go right into the formulas and uh, then, then you can solve them from there. We'll show you how to do that with the calculator. So we assume that you have a desire to pass the general exam and I was very, very encouraged by the responses that you all had of wanting to, to achieve this. It, it's a pretty big deal. 
And as Gary mentioned, your current license is a license to learn. And of course, if, if you're willing to try, that, that makes all the difference in the world. Attitude is everything. Now, there are different learning preferences that people have. What I'd like you to do is, when I talk through these three learning preferences, think about where you fit in. Which, which one describes you the best? You might be in more than one, but um, just consider. So visual learners, um, visual guides and models, show me. Um, here's, here's a chalkboard or a, a whiteboard, uh, walk through it with me. That's, that's how I learn the best. See if that's you. Next is what's called auditorial. Auditory, that's oral communications in written language. Tell me or give me a book. That's kind of where I fall. If, if you give me a book, I can usually figure it out. And then kinesthetic, a big $64 word, but it just means learn best by doing. So the question that I have for you, uh, what would you consider your learning preference? So those that would consider themselves visual, just give me a wave. Okay, a couple of you. Uh, how about auditory? Give me a book. Okay, fewer there. And then learn best by doing. Okay, that get more, more there. So the, the really good news from our class is we pretty much address all levels. Now these are learning preferences. These aren't necessarily the way that you would learn the best, but most people have a natural tendency to be more comfortable with one versus another. So what is our success plan? Well, we have a tight focus on learning aligned with the general exam. So we'll be focused very tightly on the pool questions. We want to understand how to work the formulas. And uh, there aren't a lot that you need to know, but uh, we'll, we'll go through what you need. And we will work through all of the exam pool questions, uh, 453. Now, there are some that are similar, especially in the math area, but we'll make sure that we cover at least one of each type so that you're familiar. In our tool set, Gary mentioned the license manual. You've all got that, the calculator. There's something that I call the general class reference sheet. It's all of the facts, especially related to math, on, on one page. So where in the license manual, you've got to dig through pages and pages. I've got this all on one sheet. It really helps. And then we'll be sending out some supplemental links in our emails along the way. Be practice problems, um, and that really refers to the pool questions. Mindset. Mindset is a real interesting concept. Uh, at a high level, I'm willing to expend the effort. I can do this. And there's a, a very interesting article on mindset that um, I, I put a link in. When you get the PDF for to, uh, this session, for all of our sessions, the links do actually work. So you, you can go in and, and check that out. So there's two kinds of mindsets that I'd like to touch on. Um, first of all, what you think affects what you achieve. That seems obvious, um, and expanding on that, and I'm going to talk about a growth mindset and a fixed mindset. A growth mindset views intelligence, abilities, and talents as learnable and capable of improvement through effort. Uh, you could say that, uh, you could ask the question, is it possible to increase somebody's IQ? Well, with a growth mindset, that answer would be yes. I know that's controversial in some, some places. A fixed mindset views the same traits as inherently stable and unchangeable over time. The problem with a fixed mindset is that uh, people that take kind of a fatalistic attitude don't believe that they can learn, and then they live up to that expectation in their mind. So that, that's the basic concept between a growth mindset and a fixed mindset. So I would very much encourage you, if you identify with a fixed mindset, consider um, what it would take to expand your horizons. And again, the way that you think affects how much you'll achieve. So just some food for thought and the, uh, the link that is there if you're interested in knowing more, you can check that out. Here's a concept that was new to me. Um, I took a, a project management professional exam during my career. Um, 
I've been retired for about five years now, so uh, this, this is in my past, but this was a real good suggestion and I recommend it for our ham radio students. It's optional, you don't have to do this, but it's something that you create, make it no more than one page. Anything that you are having trouble remembering, uh, formulas and so forth, uh, there might be some that are harder than others. Put that on your memory dump sheet. Sometimes unit values and conversions are conf uh, confusing. And the trick is that we want to uh, commit the memory dump sheet to memory. And that's why it's called the memory dump sheet. When you go to take your exam, you can use your scratch paper, which is usually the reverse side of your answer sheet, depending upon the VE organization that you're doing the testing with. And then you can actually uh, reproduce these things on that sheet so that when you get to the first exam question, and what happens on the first exam question? Quite often your mind turns to mush, right? <laughs> so if you've written down some of these things um, from your uh, reproducing your memory dump sheet, some, for some people this has been very helpful. So I wanted to share this as an idea for you to consider. The calculator, Gary mentioned briefly, um, takes much of the pain out of working formulas because the way that we put values into the calculator is exactly the way that they appear in the formula. It, it, it makes it a lot easier. Not expensive. I checked before class tonight, um, 20 to $25 on Amazon. Um, Staples usually has these in stock as well. Be careful that you get this exact model number though. Uh, TI has got a lot of similar sounding numbers. Uh, and the reason that I recommend this exact model is because it'll match everything that we do in the class. And I'm going to have some step-by-step -step help sheets that will uh, use the keys on this calculator. It's even more important when we get into the extra class test because um, the math gets a little bit hairier there. And we wanted to use a calculator in the general class that you could carry forward into your extra should you want to go that direction. And I know a lot of you do from our intros. All right, we mentioned that. How to guides will use this model. And usually the cutoff line for calculators that are acceptable for ham exams is graphing calculators. In other words, a graphing calculator or something fancier uh, is generally not allowed because they, they star formulas. So anything less than that will usually work. But we've heard all kinds of interesting things from VE teams or student experiences where VE teams sometimes have funny ideas about how they want to do things. Um, the FCC doesn't have a lot of guidance here and whoever is your uh, volunteer examiner, their organization, they're, they're the boss. If uh, you, you want to disagree with them, you might get thrown out of the session. Okay? <laughs> so check with them beforehand if, if you have any question. Uh, I'm, I'm a volunteer examiner and um, we're, we're pretty lax about that. Um, but there was that one team on the East Coast that said that you could only use four function calculators. Yeah, a little hard to do square roots I, huh? <laughs> that way. So um, check with whoever you're going to be testing with, especially if you're going to do an online test. Uh, they, they can be very sticky about what's allowed and what's not. Uh, my personal recommendation would be if you can do an in-person test, I, I think you'll have a better experience. If you're too far away or you really want to do an online, well, go for it. But just some caveats there. Can you mute Maureen? Say again, Mark? Can you mute Maureen? Can I mute? Oh, do we have some audio coming through? No, when you're speaking, Maureen is unmuted and is getting focus. Oh, the focus uh, yeah. thing. So yep. it's over here. Yeah, we're going to fix that. So here's Maureen and we'll just go mute. Okay, now she won't take focus. All right. I think we got that fixed. And thank you. If you see something like that, go ahead and unmute and let us know because we can probably fix it on this end, but it might be something that I wouldn't be aware of on my side. And then finally on the calculator, um, we recommend this one. Uh, we can't make anybody buy it. Uh, you can use any calculator that you want, but we won't really have time in class to try to figure out other brands of calculator. And but we do have the calculator can. We do have the calculator cam. Uh, you want to, is that on screen, Gary? Uh, yeah. Yep. 
uh, we've got this this nifty little device over here where we can actually show you keystroke by keystroke what we're doing so it's another feature of our video studio here um, all right did you have another question mark you left on mute okay mark you're muted yes ma'am okay so we're, we're good we'll continue then all right the next section all right, I'm, I see your hand waving, Mark, but I, I can't tell what you're wanting. And if you want to speak, you'll have to unmute. Oh, I have to unmute. I try to uh, <laughs> yeah. unmute on that little picture, not downstairs. Okay, okay. got it. All right, I'm sorry. This, Go ahead. Yep. This is, yes, this is just for study, not for exam. But you can get this calculator free on your phone they won't let you use it but but for study you can just download it for free and uh on android and uh, for like buck 99 you can get the graphic function also and right. it will stay with you and uh, your phone sure so okay. I, it's real good for, just for study yeah yeah. Well, my, my recommendation, um, and you can go ahead and mute yourself again. My recommendation is probably to use the TI-36X Pro for everything that you do related to this class. There's some tremendous apps out there and, and, and things, but um, to keep from getting confused, if we can focus on, on just one, that's my recommendation. You obviously can, any of you can do anything that, that you'd like to there. So I want to move on to learning tools and techniques at this point. Um, and I think there's going to be some things here that you've never heard before. Uh, th this is some really good stuff. It helped me tremendously. I have to give credit for where I got steered onto this path. Um, there's a fellow, Michael Burnett, who also does him. He's, he's got a number of him um, books about uh, studying for licenses, but we're using the ARRL, so we're not using his materials. But I ran into him at the Hamcation in Orlando, Florida in 2019, and he gave a, a seminar and, and cited this resource. There's a person, the author, Barbara Oakley, PhD, uh, wrote a book called A Mind for Numbers that has a lot of the principles that I'll be covering in the next few slides. And there's a, a link here for it as well. Uh, she actually wrote another book that's really intended for uh, teenagers and kids and you might want the adult version or you might want the kid version. I highly recommend the kid version. <laughs> the uh, uh, Kindle version is actually in color and uh, they, they brought somebody onto their staff that's good at teaching younger people. And of course, we're all young people at heart, right? I, I see a few gray hairs out there in our audience, um, but uh, it, this, this version is just so much more fun. So it's a simplified version of A Mind for Numbers, written for kids and teens, very rich in metaphors and pictures, very entertaining for adults, and it's just excellent for, for uh, general class learning. We're going to be learning a lot of new things in this class, so I wanted to share that. And these, these links will be live. This is an optional resource, but uh, I wanted to give credit for where some of these ideas came from. Houston, we have a problem. All right, so that, that was uh, from the Apollo 13 uh, mission back in 1970. And this is our problem. There's something called the forgetting curve. If we look here on the curve, here we go. Um, this is how it works. When you first hear something, the retention is up near 100%. So you can probably repeat back anything that I tell you uh, right after I tell you. So that's, that's wonderful. Now remember what the pass rate is for the general? It's like 74%. Let's see where that happens here. One day after you hear new material, you're already below 74%. So you've forgotten. Uh, you're only remembering 60% of what you heard one day later, two days, three days. A week later, you're at about 10%. So we've got all this information that we need to learn and guess what's happening with your brain. Your brain is over here, but it, it has a problem. It's leaking. You're losing the information. 
we that's our problem and it's it's like i don't know if you've ever uh that this goes back many many years but it used to be they decorate christmas trees by stringing cranberries i don't know if any of you've ever done that but it's like trying to string cranberries without a knot and the concept here is you you put cranberries on a string and of course you tie a knot in the end so that they won't fall off but um you'd, you'd be losing a lot if you didn't have the knot it's like pouring water into a leaky bucket your your brain is the bucket you're pouring stuff in by attending these classes reading the material and it, it's running out almost as fast as it's coming in so I've, I've got this analogy that I found uh, helpful I call it the magic plant analogy I happen to like pineapple that's why I picked that so pick a favorite fruit and our magic plant will produce in 11 weeks. Now, pineapples take way over a year, so just, just pretend. Now, 11 weeks, hmm, that number might mean something in a minute. We're going to need 10 gallons of water spread evenly over that time period. 10 might be a number that you remember. Unfortunately, we have a leaky container. So what can we do? Well, here's the analogy. Passing the exam is the fruit. We've got 10 weeks of class, and then week 11, you'll be ready to go take the test. Some people take it sooner than that. The amount of knowledge needed is the water. 10 chapters, 10 gallons. And our learning is leaking. That's our problem. So what can we do? This is the question. Well, we have to interrupt the forgetting process. The, the, uh, what, what's taking place when you learn things and it leaks out, that's called the forgetting process. We need to interrupt that process somehow. So what can we do? We have to plug the leaks somehow, and then we have to relearn where it might be needed. We're going to be talking about strategies that work. There's a number of them. And there are strategies that are not very effective called illusions of learning. We'll touch on those. So spaced repetition is one way that we can combat this effect. Now notice what's happening here. This is the same curve, basically. Uh, the, the numbers are um, not exactly the same as what I showed you before. But what's happening here, one day later, if you'll, the information that you take in today if you will review it tomorrow, that's day two, then that knowledge comes back up again. Three days out, review it again. Six days out, uh, these numbers aren't, aren't magic, but you, the spaced repetition can increase in, in length. And notice what's happening. We're, we're staying above the, the level that we're going to need to pass the test if we will review. So that's called spaced repetition. Now, strategies that work, we have handwritten notes. Now, you might be wondering, why in the world would I want to do handwritten notes? Well, the, uh, what happens when you handwrite notes in, in your book or as we're going through this class, you can't write as fast as you can read, and you can't write as fast as somebody can talk. So for you to take handwritten notes, you have to slow down and paraphrase what you just learned. And that paraphrasing of what you just learned is what helps sink that into long-term memory. So restate the main points in your own words. Create analogies that make sense to you. I've sprung a couple of them on you already tonight. Memory mnemonics and cues. There's some tricks that you can use uh, that'll, that'll help you remember things. Spaced repetition we talked about. Here's another, uh, it's a different diagram, but it's the same concept. If, if you can go back and, and review, that will keep that learning solid. And then you can use self-testing as a recall mechanism. The site that Gary mentioned, uh, the ARRL site, is absolutely superb. You go, th go through the material, listen to the class, and then go and test on that chapter. Uh, that will force you to recall that information and that has a major effect on getting it into long-term memory. 
and accept that permanent learning takes time. You can't cram the day before the test and expect to do well. It, it's something that has to be learned, it has to be reviewed, and um, it needs to get into your long-term memory. So these are the three things that will really help you. Spaced repetition, use self-testing as a recall uh, mechanism, and understand that it will take some time. You'll need to hear this stuff more than once. Now, it, something amazing happens when you sleep. Uh, again, I got this from some of Barbara's books. Um, we actually accumulate a lot of junk in our brain, chemicals that get washed out when we're sleeping. Gets rid of that stuff. Uh, and then the next day, we saw from the forgetting curve that you're gonna forget things. Uh, but if, if you review it again, that'll, that'll bump it up. So this is what you want. You want a brick wall of learning. Think of this as a, a pier that you would build a, a building on, the building structure. So this is what you want. Not this. Now you'll, you'll notice a bunch of uh, concrete, or a bunch of bricks that are just falling apart. I don't know if uh, you knew this, but it takes concrete 24 to 48 hours to initially set. It takes concrete seven days to get to three quarters of its compression strength. And for heavy, heavy machinery, they recommend that you not put anything on it for 28 days. Uh, I thought that this was a wonderful parallel to what, what we're learning here. So we want to, this is what we want, not this. This goes back to the, uh, the, the college trick of staying up the night before the exam and, and cramming. I'm sure nobody's ever done that, right? <laughs> Except for Gary, yeah, none, none of you have ever done that. Yeah, but this is the result. So again, a, a picture. So illusions, illusions of competence. That, this was fascinating to me. A lot of people approach learning using some techniques that are not effective. And we're, we're gonna go through those, and some of them are gonna be kind of amazing to you. Uh, I might upset some apple carts here. Highlight almost everything. I don't know if you've ever done that. You're going through trying to learn something and you grab your yellow highlighter and uh, just highlight. At the end of your intense study session, you've got a page that's mostly yellow. Well, the problem with doing that is that, um, not against highlighting, we'll comment on that further, but uh, you can highlight about as fast as, as you can read or, or even type, um, but that doesn't get it into long-term memory but the activity of highlighting makes you feel like you're doing something. <laughs> so um, I, I must be learning it if I'm highlighting it, right? Well, no, that doesn't really work. This one I love, the logic of classroom explanations. I'm, I'm gonna be going through and showing, um, sharing some principles, um, some math formulas, some electronic principles as we go, and they're gonna make 100% sense to you as we're going through it. You'll say, oh, I, I get that. I know how to do that. And then when you go to do it on your own, you'll feel like uh, you're, you're in a boat without a paddle. So if you follow what we're talking about in class, don't assume that that means you know it. It has to be reviewed. Now, I've got a friend that wanted to, somebody mentioned here that they were uh, in the military and somebody, uh, they have to have one ham in, in their unit. Well, I have a friend that was in a similar situation. He thought, well, I can pass my ham test. And what he did was he did practice tests for an entire year, technician, general, and extra, and did nothing but practice tests. At the end of the year, he went and took his tests and got 100%. Do you know what he knew about radio? Absolutely nothing. Yes, <laughs> we're getting some zeros there. Um, to his credit, though, he came back and went through our, our classes and, and, and picked up the information that wasn't there. So doing repeated practice tests before knowing the material and its context won't get it into long-term memory. It won't benefit you in, in your future ham career. And we're trying real hard in the, these classes to give you not only the ability to pass the test, but to understand why the right answers are the right answers and it'll be material that you can help, that, that will be available to use you, uh, that you will be able to use for your future in ham radio. Cramming before the test, we talked about. And none of this is effective for long-term memory, so um, just, just wanted to point these things out. These might have been some of your learning techniques in school, 
Um, I've heard it said that uh, they teach you a lot of interesting things in school, but one thing that they don't teach you is learning how to learn. So we're just sharing some high level principles here that I, I think can be really helpful to you. Another new concept here, focus versus diffuse mode. And we've got basically two pinball machines here. And we have a thought and we shoot it into memory and we're very focused on the solution. And if we limit our focus to a small part of our brain, which we do when we're in focused mode, uh, that limits us from uh, using our entire brain to come up with the answer. Now the diffuse mode is when a thought can be launched and you can use your entire brain to work on it. I'll give you an example here. Uh, I was in a situation where I was driving my car, minding my own business, uh, driving the speed limit. It was a dark night and a deer jumped out from be behind a bridge and I, I clobbered it. Okay, um, The airbags went off, the engine stopped, and I was really desperate to try to figure out how to get the car started again. So that I, I was all locked up in this, how in the world am I going to get the car started? Well, the car wasn't going to start. So I forgot about it for a little bit. As soon as you get out of the focused mode, then your brain can go into what's called the diffuse mode and search for other things that might be there. Well, I remembered that when the, a vehicle's in a crash, there's a sensor or a valve it's in the car that I had, it was in the trunk. You can go back there and reset it and it'll reestablish the fuel supply. So I, I, I thought of that when I stopped worrying about it. I was, I was busy trying to call my wife and all of that, so I wasn't thinking about how to get it started. And, and so that thought came to me and it, and it solved my problem. Now the, the interesting thing is that the focus mode and the diffuse mode are mutually exclusive. When you're in the focused mode, you can't go into the diffuse mode. So if you're working on a problem that's really thorny, you're really trying to learn a concept or a principle, the best thing you can do is just forget about it for a while. Go for a walk, wash the dishes, um, take a nap. That lets your entire brain work on the problem and you might wake up with a solution. Has anybody ever had an aha moment where you were really struggling with something and the next day, an hour later perhaps, you just bang, there's the answer. Yeah, I'm seeing some heads nod. That's a result of what we're talking about. So moving on, um, some more learning techniques. I recommend learning reading recreationally first. Go through the uh, license manual, but don't try to understand it. Look at the summary, look at the titles in the chapter. What's happening is that you're seeding your brain uh, with things that can be watered and planted and, and grow. This I, I call this a picture walk, where you approach a chapter and just get the highlights, then go back. Now here's, here's a specific technique um, in focus versus diffuse learning. Uh, some people recommend, this is called the Pomodoro technique. This sort of looks like a, uh, see if we can get it up here, yeah, to, a tomato. It's actually a timer and Pomodoro means a tomato in Italian. The fellow that came up with this, uh, that's, that's, that's the background. So focus versus diffuse learning, 25 minutes of intense focused study. Okay, you're focused, you're in focus mode. Then do anything else to disconnect. The brain will continue to work in diffuse mode after you've set that aside and come back to focus on it a little bit later. And the aha experience that I talked about, that's how that works. So Pomodoro also fights procrastination. Anybody can focus for 25 minutes, right? So if you'll just get the uh, process started, uh, it's not so hard to continue for 25 minutes. So eliminate all distractions, set your timer for 25 minutes. There's apps online that you can, uh, Pomodoro apps actually, uh, if you don't wanna buy a tomato, I think I got this one on Amazon. For some, classical music helps. Some of you have heard of the Mozart effect, which I know is controversial, but um, some gentle, relaxing music a lot of times will uh, enhance your learning. It works for me. I'd recommend in, against some kind of jangling, you know, something that will pull your attention away. 
blitz, study as hard as you possibly can for those 25 minutes, and then set it aside. Uh, take a walk, exercise, take a nap, do something different, study an unrelated area. Thomas Edison <laughs> had a very interesting technique. He'd sit in a chair, uh, he was famous for, for taking naps, and he'd have ball bearings in his hand. So he'd be working on a problem and struggling with it, so his technique was he'd go sit in his comfy chair with ball bearings in his hand and perhaps a pie tin on the floor. And when he started dozing off, what do you think would happen? Well, he'd drop the ball bearings, they'd make noise, and it would wake him up. And a lot of times he'd have a solution to whatever it was he was working on. I, th I thought that was hilarious, <laughs> but it also reinforces what we're talking about versus um, focus versus diffuse because you can't be focused when you're falling asleep. Make links to similar concepts. Uh, analogies are terrific that way. When you get a brand new piece of information, if you can't hook it to anything that you already know, it's really, really hard to get that new concept. So analogies are a terrific way to do that. Related knowledge, and you'll see us as we're going through our, our classes, always trying to connect something new to something we've already covered makes it much easier to learn the new material. So depending upon what kind of a learning preference you have, well, try all three. That can be helpful. Engage all possible senses. Remember we, when we were talking about the pineapple analogy? Well, what does a pineapple smell like? What does it taste like? Uh, the, the brain is an amazing device that um, will help remember. It, uh, if, if you can make some of these uh, sensation connections, to what it is you're trying to remember, you'll remember it better. So imagine the concept, tell yourself a story about it, and write it out by hand. Teaching it to another person can really help. Here's an interesting quote from uh, Trotman. I don't know much about him, but he says, thoughts disentangle themselves when they pass through the lips and the fingertips. Now, what in the world does that mean? Well, it, when you try to explain something to somebody else, those thoughts are passing through your lips. Or if you're writing out in longhand um, summaries of what you're reading, the information is passing through your fingertips. So thoughts disentangle themselves when they pass through the lips and fingertips. I thought that was great. Then there's a, a guy coming up here. He's kind of a smart guy. Most people consider him a smart guy, Albert Einstein. And he said, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. You talking about me? Yeah, that's you. That's you, for sure. So learning techniques. Um, something I'll suggest, recall from memory without looking at the solution. So you're going to see a practice problem or a pool question problem. Um, remember what you know about it. Uh, read the question and discern what it's asking, which causes you to slow down a little bit and think. Recall what you know about it. What did Gary and Dave say in class? Draw a diagram, very helpful. And then recall from memory how to solve it, if you can, and then solve it. Now, it, you're gonna get stuck, you're gonna forget things. If so, look at your reference material as may be necessary, and then come back again, maybe the same day, maybe another day, and repeat it, and uh, the lights will come on. So that, that works. Now, what do you do between classes? We've got a class tonight. We didn't cover any pool questions, but uh, between classes, spaced repetition is really important. Review the PDFs that we'll be sending out. Uh, be, be doing some of the practice um, exams or on the chapter and the subsections on the ARRL site, and um, accept that it's going to take some time. And again, we want this versus that. Now, our friend uh, Michael Burnett had a, a list of uh, 10 or 11 things that he suggested. This might be good to put on a, a refrigerator magnet, commit to a date, and stick to it. And Gary mentioned working on scheduling your exam. Do that. It will help motivate you to be ready when that date comes. Make a steady schedule and stick to it. It's terrific that you're all willing to come on Tuesday nights and go through this with us or make, make it up on YouTube if you miss it. Study with a friend. That's kind of hard when we're all remote, but um, you have everybody's email addresses. You can do that. Read and recall. Engage lots of senses. Learn the material first, 
or at least be exposed to it before you try the practice exams and build your own context, linking new things to things that you already know. Take breaks, Pomodoro, that's 25 minutes, then give yourself five minutes to do something else before you come back again. Learn more than is necessary. You'll have lots of opportunities to do that between the Kastler videos and there's, there's more information in the AWRL license manual than you'll need to pass the test. So that's an example of learning more than necessary. Explain material to other people. Don't put off the hard stuff when you get, get some, to something that's tripping you up. Uh, work on it. And then get a solid night's sleep before the exam. Back to the college cramming idea. And um, it, it's been proven that if you don't get a good night's sleep, your mind is more likely to turn to mush when, you're actually, when, when you really need it. So that, that's why the comment, if you don't do number 11, the other 10 may not matter. We're going to have more fun next week. We really are. We're going to get into Chapter 2, and uh, there are, are test questions there, and uh, we'll uh, in, enjoy getting into all of that. Now, we've, we've put you through quite a lot tonight, and I'd, I'd like to do a group exercise at this point. If, if everybody could, could raise your hands like this, okay, and now give yourself some applause for surviving our first class. You all are awesome, and we sure thank you for hanging in there with us. And we'll, we'll go at it next week. Is there any questions from tonight? Go ahead and unmute if you want to share anything. Okay, not getting any questions or, or comments. So we'll, we'll let you go for the night. And thank you so much for being a, a part of this adventure. Um, having your general will, will really change your ham radio outlook. So many more things you can do. Any comments, Gary? I just want to say thank you uh, for being a great class and look forward to seeing you next week. Chapter 2, Dave will be instructing, but I'll be here as well. So, yep. And if you get any questions, just send me an email, w4eey at arrl dot net. Very good. Well, good night all. Yep. Ciao, ciao. You betcha.